folks, this is JW with Stevens Family Outdoors, and uh, Mama and I are in the back yard here, and we are going to take a walk down here to the garden, where if you look, we've got our wood chips in. I was able to get them in last evening, but nonetheless... It was fairly uneventful. Glad to get that done now. We can get our potatoes planted after I get this spread out. Also, I wanted to show you this uh, peach tree here. The big stump here. It died up top, so I went ahead and cut it out. But I noticed that there was a shoot coming out that was still alive very much. So I left it on there and left the stump there so that we could uh, monitor this and see how it's going to act and if it's going to produce it or is it just going to, you know, get uh, overweight with fruit and then eventually break off or whatever. But Whatever, but whatever. So I went ahead and I put the uh, some wood chips around the base of it to feed it with uh, moisture and nutrients likewise the rose of Sharon there now none of this is raked out yet and I need to rake this all out okay so mom and I are gonna walk down here there's our um, grapevine yeah here it is lasted through that winter I'm going to use my foot and show you the... Where's my foot? There it is. Okay, here's my grapevine. You can see my foot there shaking it. I've got to <clears throat> level all these wood chips out. And what I'll do is wherever you see wood chips, um up through here then of course right down here my strawberries right there in, in a box that's before I realized that a box is not a smart way to do stuff because of the moisture level but from the box all the way up here to where I'm at down here to this area here and around around the apple tree it's all going to be eight inches of wood chips and we're going to place our potatoes in rows three foot apart and place the potatoes in those rows one foot apart um and however many i get in there that this will be our potato patch and they And they should uh, supply mom and I with taters for the year, hopefully. And what we'll do is this September when we harvest these potatoes here, each, uh, each potato plant that we pull up will harvest all the potatoes. And then uh, the biggest one in each hill, we, we will put it back in the ground and cover it up so that next year's crop is started and then we don't have to do anything next spring and we should be able to continue that for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. lord willing okay so that's the way we do potatoes one time a uh, plant and then after you harvest them that year the biggest potato that is left in in that hill we put it back in the ground because for two reasons number one we want to give back to the lord the first fruit the best uh and then also the bigger the potato the bigger the eyes the more shoots uh the more potato yield we will have so we're going to walk on down through here and we may not talk a whole lot but we'll go ahead and give you a visual
And this is our apple tree. I, I trimmed it back fairly good. Um, of course, it's got those little woodpecker holes in it, but that doesn't hurt anything. And of course, potatoes will be all around this, and uh, it doesn't. Uh, the apple tree does not affect the thing. Then on down through here is the main garden where we'll have our beans. Um, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Cabbage. And possibly some cucumbers down on the lower end to the left. We also have some boxes up top there that will have uh, forget them cucumbers. I said, I said, I said oh, okay. beans. Green, Green beans, beans go mm -hmm. up there. We'll mm -hmm. put probably about four or five rows in there. Mm -hmm. We had seven rows last year, but um, boy, that was almost more than we could <laughs> handle. But we ended up selling a few bushel of those also. But I don't know if we're going to go to all that trouble. Um, I think what we'll do is just put back what we going to need for the year and then our children you know they like them also so I've got some a lot of hand work down here to level some of this out and uh, put some wood chips where it's a little thin like right there where that grass is uh, coming up is a little thin with wood chips so I'll cover that up here are our strawberries that I was telling you about they're in a wooden box, a raised bed, and um, as I've told you before, that I've come to the knowledge that raised beds are not the best way to do things because when it does rain and they get moisture, all the moisture is going to fall straight through and soak all the way down to the original ground level and leave leave the um, strawberries not as moist as they could be. Also you see wood chips on top of this strawberries here. What I do every fall is I'll cover the strawberry plants with about four inches or so of wood chips and cover them completely up and then what happens is I do not have to do any thinning at all what happens is is that the old plants are not hardy enough to push up through the wood chips but the new plants which will be this year's crop bearer are hardy enough to push up through and it works very well uh, on producing new plants every year coming up through. The old plants uh, end up dying underneath and going back and nourishing the soil uh, whereas the new plants have enough vigor and energy to push up through the wood chips. I'm actually looking to see if anything is starting to come forth. I see the squirrels. Here we go. What is this? There you go. I think there's a strawberry starting to come up right there. <clears throat> so I think the biggest downfall to this particular box down here, Dad, wouldn't it be because we started these boxes and you put actually we put topsoil and we put uh, all kinds of stuff in here, then our wood chips. But now if we would have just had our wood chips and then we would have boxed it in with a perimeter of the you know the the wood then it, it would have been okay because it would have been just like this but it's because the boxes we've already filled them up with our soils and with other things and then put wood chips on top so that's that's why right well uh, what it, the box the wooden frame in itself is not the problem no. it's the elevating mm -hmm. 
uh, with extra topsoil in right. there that's higher than the original ground. Yeah. And of course, you know, water is going to do what? It's going to seek. Right. It's going to level itself out, and it's going to go down to mm -hmm. the original ground level. Well, that's why I was saying for the viewer's discretion is that uh, that would be letting them know that they can, you know, segregate with wood if they wanted to, but they don't yeah. need the topsoil on top and all that added to it. Right, yeah, you can do that. Right. You can just put the perimeter boards there if you wish, but no extra topsoil. Stay down on the original ground level. Um, but in reality... It's not feasible to do that. I would, you know, once these uh, dilapidate and go bad, I'll rip them out and that is it. We won't put any more boards up. We'll just uh, have the strawberries on the ground. Okay, Mama. As we look here now, we see, you see some fence panels. Three rows of them. These are 16 feet long and I plant about eight tomato plants at each one. Big beasts and uh, there are 24 plants of those and I just love a mater sandwich so that's why we have those. And um, you know that's uh, gives me two dozen here of the, say like big beef that style uh, tomatoes and then in between these panels and these panels it's an area here that we plant our Brussels sprouts uh, our cabbages and things of such and like that and then we have at the bottom say let me see yeah in this area down here an area where we can uh, subsidize with whatever we want to put in at that time of year. Uh, anything from, say, cucumbers, uh, extra cucumbers, because we put a lot of cucumbers up top. Um, cucumbers, and then when they're pretty well done, we can go ahead and plant some beets or turnips in down there, you know, to... Uh, utilizes the the ground all that it, all that we can okay mama's got my arm again you see a tiller there i do not use the tiller i said this in a previous video do not use the tiller to disturb the ground we used it um one year to May, uh, may move the wood chips out so that in the rows so that i could get down to gr ground level to the top of the ground and scratch it up to plant like beans and, and peas and corn and stuff like that. that's all we use the tiller for and here once again three more panels and these are for my roma tomatoes the paste made us okay folks we're down here to my Roma tomato tomatoes. batch and uh, and they do extremely well down here we've got how many bushels did we get last year of the Roma's mama oh my several uh, 10 15 maybe probably Roma's are one of the hardiest and one of the best tomatoes and you, they're good eating too. A lot of people have the wrong idea. You can eat the romas just like you do a regular tomato. They're you can. real meaty and they're good. Very meaty, very mm -hmm. sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, you know, my taste buds tell me. Um, and I love to sauce, just, paste. I love, I love to just mm -hmm. get them off the vine, wipe them off, and, mm -hmm. and eat them with some salt, just like an apple. Right. Yeah, they're very good. So this is um, this is a little tour of our garden, and what we're going to do with that building over there is we're going to it goes inside, and we're going to bring um, some of our chickens. We have Plymouth Rocks, we have Rhode Island Reds, and we have Osterlorps. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring down here, say. Uh, we have 20 
Plymouth Rocks. Probably bring them down here and let them roam on the outside around back there where you see the green grass. And then they can go inside there and lay their eggs. That way uh, we have some chickens down here at the bottom and some chickens up top and we don't have our quote eggs in one basket, no pun intended. Um, so we'll get back with you as the garden progresses here and uh, as we get going. We're getting ready, as I told you, to plant our potatoes up there and then I'm going to go ahead and plant. This is April 10th. I'm going to probably buy today. We're going to go get some um, non-GMO style Brussels sprouts and and possibly cabbage plants and go ahead plants and go ahead put them out they're pretty hardy I think we're going to be okay uh, I'd rather take a chance and plant early things like Brussels sprouts and cabbage and have a jump start and possibly lose them um, you can always plant them again later if you do lose them, but you can't plant them earlier. You can't plant them on uh, April the 10th if you wait until May 1st. You can't go back and do that, but you can always replace plants that might freeze out if you get a super freeze. But normal uh, weather this time of year... Uh, the Brussels sprouts and things of such are tolerant. So we've got some, a lot of work to do here. Um, Ma and I. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're just so happy to mm -hmm. be able to be able to get out and do. Uh, you're trying to hide behind me there. There you go. It's a little go. chilly. <laughs> a little chilly? Oh. <laughs> But anyway, we're so glad that we have the health um, to get out and do this. And may not be as fast as we used to be, but uh, slow and steady gets the job done. You're watching Stephen's Family Outdoors. Have a great day and God bless. God bless.